Ian, we've uh, heard in the UK quite a bit about how in New Zealand you're using the concept of alliance contracting right. to help develop integrated health networks. And I wonder if you could tell me a bit about actually what is alliance contracting and how does it actually work? Yes, well it's a big move away from a traditional contract. In a traditional contract the funder puts out a request for a proposal, they typically take the cheapest tender and once the, the provider is in there then they really work out what they want to do uh, within, the limits of, um, within the limits of the contract and often they're also asking is it possible for us to make money in this. Um, in an alliance contract the funder selects the provider on their basis of their ability to collaborate with them before money is discussed. So that really provides a very clear foundation. Once the, the provider is selected, then they discuss money and they agree, both sides agree to give away the right to litigation. And that means that they can't end up fighting each other. They have to work something out together. In many of the alliance contracts, the only alternative to getting on together is ripping up the entire contract, which is unthinkable very often. And in what kind of sectors or industries has alliance contracting been used primarily? Uh, it's been used um, a little bit in the military, in um, electricity transmission, but mostly in roading and infrastructure development. And what advantages have you seen in those examples in terms of how things have actually played out through using an alliance contract? So uh, for projects that are very complex, so if you're building a tunnel in the middle of a city and very large projects, it has huge advantages because you can get all of the parties together at the beginning and they can all work together from the start and that provides a huge advantage. So you can drive in one of the bridges from uh, driving in from the airport in Auckland. The old bridge took seven years to build, the new bridge took 28 months to build under an alliance contract. And what do you think it was about that alliance contract specifically that helped that project be so much more effective? Um, I think there are t uh, probably two main areas. First of all, all of the parties in the, in the alliance are co-located. So the designer sits next to the constructor. So the designer has to construct something that's buildable. and That's a big step forward. And secondly, everybody is incentivized to do better. So they agree upon a price. If they can come in under that price, everybody shares the gain. If they go over the price, everybody shares the pain. It's one team, the consequences are the same for everybody. So it's very much about risk sharing and gain sharing Absolutely. within the overall alliance. Absolutely. So that brings us then to the role, of the potential of alliance contracting within the health sector. Right. Could you tell me a bit about how that's come about in New Zealand, how this concept developed in construction and roading has been um, in a sense transferred over and being explored within the health sector? Well I think that the, the government saw the, the huge gains that had been made in infrastructure and they said well this makes so much sense why don't we apply it in health. But health is a very different animal and the pace of alliance contracting here is much much slower than it is in infrastructure and it's very patchy so there are some very good examples in New Zealand and there are some very ordinary examples of where people are really still talking and really haven't got there to the stage where they're actually implementing things. Tell me a bit more about uh, alliance contracting within health in New Zealand. Just you know, can you paint the picture really of how that's working? Who's mm -hmm. sat around the table? What's it being used for? Right. What are they trying to achieve? Well, the, the big uh, health challenges that we've got is that we've got an aging population and a very rapidly growing rate of obesity. So we're really going to have to do something very soon or the health system will potentially collapse. So there are a, a number of alliances which are really looking at high needs populations and they're really saying if the, uh, if the hospital sector and the community sector could work together we could actually address a lot of these issues 
potentially we could save a huge number of hospital admissions and we could provide integrated care for people. And there's probably a number of clusters, so diabetes is obviously one example, but the elderly is another example where those people are very prone to hospital admissions, which don't add a lot of value, they're much better in their home, but how do we actually get those services delivered at that sort of level? So that's really the, the, the type of situation that was envisaged where health could really make, make a, where alliance contracting could make a big impact in health. So who's, so who is involved in, if you take an example perhaps of a specific alliance, who would be around the table and how are you observing that that's working out? Uh, I think there are a number of really important lessons. One is that uh, the simpler the um, and the smaller the community it's done in, the better. So the alliance that was uh, set up for the whole of Auckland with a number of uh, district health boards and a large number of GP organisations, very complicated, very difficult. In some of the smaller areas where there is uh, a single funder and a large GP organisation, those tend to work better. The other thing is, uh, that they work better when you've got a flexible funder who's prepared to give up some of their um, power and authority. Uh, it works much better when there is a clear demarcation. One of the things I've seen in health that's a, a big challenge is whenever the hospital sector and the community sector start talking together, they immediately get into this, well, if we can do it here, why don't we do it here, and why don't we, and now we've ended up with something bigger than Ben Hur that is simply unmanageable. In the infrastructure sector, the funder says, I want a bridge here. Mm -hmm. And that's, so scope is incredibly important. And the other thing in, in infrastructure is that there are clear financial incentives because in that sector, it's appropriate and reasonable for people to make profit and the funder recognises that. In health, that's a much more complicated thing. And I don't think there will be an easy solution to this until it's recognised that there has to be a financial gain, even if that financial gain is automatically reinvested in improvement of services. It doesn't have to go into an individual's pocket, but there has to be some commercial imperative to work together. That's really interesting. So key issues for the health sector are sorting out scope, yep. sorting out financial risk and incentives, yes. and actually being quite clear about why it is they're entering into the alliance yes. and for what particular service or services and being perhaps cautious about expanding too quickly to yes. try and do yes. more. And the other thing in infrastructure, there is a very clearly defined model of what an alliance is and you can go to uh, the Victoria uh, government website in Australia and you can download a manual on it. Okay? And that manual has basically teaches you how to select people, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Where in New Zealand we don't have a clear model. and until we have a, some working examples, it'll be hard to know how those things should be evolving and exactly what they should look like. I'll just ask one final question, Ian. Just sort of looking to the future, how do you think alliance contracting is going to work out in the New Zealand health sector, say over the next two to three years? Well, I think the, the problems that we face mean we have to find a new solution. And it's hard to go past the option of saying collaboration is the best way to go. So I think it's inevitable in some form. The form and exactly how it evolves is very unclear. Well, thank you very much for talking to me today. And that's given us a lot to think about as we explore whether or not alliance contracting is something that would make sense uh, for the NHS in the UK. Thank you.